Hello, my name is Elijah Wells, and today, or yesterday, the BAFTA nominations came out, so let's get on with it. For best film, there's Autonomy of a Fool, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Already I do see some really staggering snobs already on this category, like we don't have Past Lives, great film. We don't have Barbie, uh, again, another brilliant film. Uh, which is, again, in quite a lot of best picture categories at the moment, and surprisingly no zone of interest or something. Again, a little bit of a very shaky start already for uh, best film, particularly for the BAFTAs already. And I think, I've, I'm, I imagine it's going to go to Oppenheimer for this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if it went to, like, Kills of Flower Moon or Poor Things, but I pretty much imagine at this point Oppenheimer's going to win for Outstanding British Film. Uh, there's All of Us Are Strangers, How to Have Sex, Napoleon, Old Oak, Poor Things, Rye Lane, Saltburn, Scrapper, Wonka, and Zone of Interest. Again, there's some pretty strong categories here, or st strong films here already, like Poor Things is absolutely huge. Napoleon, although it was an alright movie, I guess. Wonka was surprisingly really well done. And Zone of Interest, even though it's Jonathan Glacier's first film for 10 years, it's Getting a lot talked about, getting talked about a lot at the moment. But I think I definitely want to go for Poor Things for this one to win Best British Film. Uh, for Best Actress, there's Fantasia Ballono for Colour Purple, Sandra Holler for Autonomy of a Fool, Kerry Mulligan for Maestro, Vinian Opera for Rye Lane, Margot Robbie for Barbie, and Emma Stone for Poor Things. Again, some very egregious, 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 egregious snubs here, like no Greta Lee for past lives at all, but most discurtainly, or most very concerning as, as well, there's no uh, Lily uh, Gladstone for Killers of Flower Moon, who in my opinion delivered one of the best performances of, of this year in my opinion, and should really be earning an Oscar in my opinion, but no, for some reason, neither of them are in this category, which is they both did brilliant performances, I'm not going to lie, but why did, why no recognition? Why? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, but I think I'm uh, going to go with Emma Stone for Poor Things because I really liked her performance in the movie. I really liked the movie as it is. For Best Actor, there's Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Dygo for Rustine, Paul Giamani for Holdovers, Barry Gollahan for Saltburn, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, and Toei Yo for Past Lives. Again, uh, again, not uh, the uh, BAFTAs are secretly not fans of uh, Gorsese from the looks of it, just because uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is nowhere to be found in this category, even though he, again, delivered a knockout performance as well. But I think I I I'm, I'm, wouldn't be surprised, and I'm definitely definitely gonna be backing Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer since his performance is brilliant in my opinion. For supporting actress, there's Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks for Color Purple, Claire Foe for All of Us Strangers, Sandra Holler for Zone of Interest, Rosamund Pike for Saltburn, and Devine Joy Randolph for Holdovers. Again, this is a double nomination for Sandra Holler, who was nominated for Autonomy of a Fool, and as well as this, the Jonathan Glazer film, uh, Zone of Interest. Again, I really want, uh, I, I do imagine seeing Divine Joy, Randolph winning for Holdovers, and this is why I'm definitely uh, projecting would win for this one. And for Supporting Actor, we have Robert De Niro for Killers of Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, Jacob Eldo for Sawburn, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, Paul Masca for All of Us Strangers, and Dunrick Cesia for The Holdovers. Again, I think this is probably a really strong category in my opinion, but I think this is going to be a really, really strong one uh, for, I think it's going to be a bit of a, uh, one contender is going to win this. It's maybe Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Like he's already gained uh, more and more awards uh, as he's uh, uh, coming along in this uh, uh, season as we speak, and also that uh, there's uh, uh, some recognition of Robert De Niro, Ryan Gosling, and Jacob as well. But I think Robert Downey Jr. Uh, is going to be the winner. For uh, director, there's All of Us Strangers by Andrew Ho. 
I mean, Hague, sorry. Autonomy of War by Justine Terrett, Holdovers by Alexander Payne, Maestro by Bradley Cooper, Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, and The Zone of Interest by Jonathan Glazer. Again, a monumentally big snub here is there's no Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon since Again, uh, this was a great movie, he deserved uh, some recognition at least, but again, very surprising they've not included him at all in this category, since you have your cat, your nominee six people and you're not uh, gave Scorsese some, at least the uh, people I saw back in Marvel films are going to have a field day with this, but again, for director, I'm, I think it's going to go, have to go to Oppenheimer for Christopher Nolan. Since again, I think this is the one name that's popping up at the moment. Again, there's uh, Get a Girl Work for Barbie, but she's also again not nominated here for some reason. For Outstanding Debut for a British Writer, Director, Producer, there's Blue Bag Life, Bobby Wine, The Previous President, Earth Mama, How to Have Sex, and Is There Anyone Out There? Again, I haven't seen any of these movies, I'm so sorry, but. I think, uh, from what I've heard the most, it's probably, I, I'm, I imagine it's How to Have Sex, it might be the winner for that one, just because, from what I've heard from my friends and colleagues. And a film, not in English, there's 20 Days in Marapool, Autonomy of a Fool, Past Lives, Society of Snow, and Zone of Interest. Uh, I really want to see uh, Past Lives win for this one, but uh, there's also like really steep competition, also from Zone of Interest, but also Autonomy of a Fool, which I wouldn't be surprised if Autonomy of a Fool would win, but I am backing Past Lives, but my final definition is, I'm backing Past Lives, but I imagine it's most likely going to go to Autonomy of a Fool. For Documentary, there's 20 Days in Marapool, American Symphony, Beyond Utopia, still a Michael J. Fox movie, and WHAM! Uh, going down with each documentary, there's 20 Days in Marapol, which is about the uh, siege city uh, in, U in southern Ukraine, which is unfortunately still being held captive by uh, a Russian terrorist at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, I've thought out to them uh, if they're still watching it. Uh, American Symphony, about uh, the American culture around uh, classical music. Beyond Utopia, which is about uh, North Korean defectors uh, pretty much re uh, really readjusting their lives uh, after defection and how brutal it was living in one of the most oppressive regimes being North Korea. There's still a Michael J. Fox movie about an act about the world's famous uh, Back to the Future actor Michael J. Fox who unfortunately recently retired due to his Parkinson disease which he has been an activist for a very lo long time about. And there's Wham, a documentary about the band Wham. Well, I think I want, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, 20 Days in Marapool would win, but again, I think it's going to have to go to 20 Days in Marapool, which uh, should be a really big win for them. And for animated feature, we have Boy and Heron, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, Elemental, and Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. We are back at it again, the, probably the tightest category of them all. I think I wouldn't know, uh, it's definitely going to go down to two. It's either Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse or Boy and Heron. Like, this is essentially the Barbenheimer of, uh, of the critics uh, at the moment, or when it comes to anime movies or award shows. Like, yes, I know the uh, Barbenheimers, due to the fact they're both released on the same day and had polar opposite tones and stories, yada yada yada, but it kind of got me to think, like, one's one of the most critically acclaimed sequel superhero movies out there at the moment, and one is definitely uh, one uh, uh, from one of the most brilliantly consistent directors out there uh, doing his strongest works uh, after a 10-year hiatus. But I, I wouldn't know at this point. Uh, if it's Spider-Man or Boy and Heron, I would be pleased with either because both films were honestly brilliant in my opinion. For original screenplay, there's Autonomy of a Fall, Barbie, Holdovers, Maestro, and Past Lives. Okay, what's very, very weird about this list is there's Barbie on the list. Like, don't get me wrong, Barbie, a brilliant movie, brilliant script, and all that, but original screenplay? Really? Like, okay, there's. She was a supporting character in Toy Story, yes. Uh, she has a massive toy line, yes. A cultural and fashion icon, yes, and loads of direct-to-video or streaming vi uh, movies, 
makes sense. Like, why is she on adapted all places? But very weird. But I think I imagine uh, either Autonomy of a Fall or hold Holdovers would win. But again, uh, it's a very tight category in my opinion. So it's either Holdovers or Autonomy of a Fall. For adapted screenplay, there's All of Us Are Strangers, American Fiction, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Zone of Interest. I think it's either going to go to either Poor Things or Oppenheimer, but if it's at gunpoint, I imagine Oppenheimer would win for that one. And for BAFTA Rising Star Award, voted by the public and sponsored by EE, -E, we have Vanellope Devner, uh, AOD uh, Adder, and Jacob Elder. Okay, I'm really bad at pronouncing names at this point. Maya McKinney Bruce or Sophie Wilde. I think maybe Jacob Elder. El so I, I think I'm going to stop talking about this category because I'm just really bad at, at names at this point. And for best original score, there's Killers of a Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Saltburn, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I think there's no question about it. It's definitely going to go to Oppenheimer at this point. Uh, even though it, there's some major players that it didn't include, like Boy and the Heron, which surprised me at the Golden Globes, and there's no zone of interest, but... Uh, I'm pretty pleased that uh, Oppenheimer is still gaining uh, some momentum and it hopefully should win. For best casting, even though for this category I have no idea what best casting meant to entitle or meant to entail or something, but I'm just going to go with Flo at this point. There's All of Us Strangers, Autonomy of a Fall, Holdovers, How to Have Sex, and Killers of the Flower Moon. I think as I think, uh, judging blindly what category is meant to entail, I think maybe it goes to Killers of a Flower Moon. For cinematography, there's Killers of a Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Zone of Interest. I think, yeah, they're all both some incredible cinematography here and there. Killers of a Flower Moon is obviously a beautiful lookout, so is Poor Things, but I think Oppenheimer is a winner for my liking. For best costume, we have Barbie, Killers of a Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I think uh, this one's a like two horse race as well because I think it maybe is, is either b between Barbie or Poor Things. Barbie being a massive fashion icon that she is, and Poor Things of how extravagant the costume work, work is, and, and Yorkers Lafamus's uh, previous experience with costume dramas and dark comedies. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was either Barbie or or, or poor things, but realistically, I think maybe I have to go for Barbie. For best editing, uh, there's Atomony of a Fall, Killers of a Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Zone of Interest. Again, some really, really good choices in this category, like really good films in this category. I think it's going to go to Oppenheimer. Me, go to Oppenheimer for this one because I really do like the editing it does, like between the interwoven narratives, in my opinion. And we have, for production design, we have Barbie, Killers of a Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Zone of Interest. Again, with costume, I think this is going to be a very tight category, particularly between Barbie and Poor Things, in my opinion. But I think, I'd, in the ideal world, I might see Poor Things win for this one, but realistically, it's going to go to Barbie. For makeup and hairstyling, we have Killers of a Flower Moon, Maestro, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Uh, Maestro's one was particularly controversial because Bradley Cooper's character, uh, Leonard Bernstein, is Jewish, and and of course the uh, it was noted that uh, Bradley Cooper used a prosthetic nose to make his nose uh, to be bigger, and adding to a stereotype that Jewish people have big noses. And surprisingly, Steven Spielberg, the film's producer, defended uh, the use of that, and of course. Uh, Leonard, Bernstein, uh, yeah, Leonard Bernstein's estate uh, even defended the makeup choice, which is uh, surprising by just roll of it. But I think I want to see Paul Things win for makeup and hairstyle because I really like uh, William Defoe's like deformities he had, which are very interesting in my opinion. And for sound, we have Ferrari, Maestro, Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One, Oppenheimer, and Zone of Interest. Uh, and for Zone of Interest, which is very interesting how critics are describing the sound work of this movie as 
uh, all the horrors of the Holocaust, like it play, it plays in the background uh, in sound, like gunshots, like furnaces and people crying and all that. Uh, it's all played in the background, which is uh, adds to, uh, adds to already uh, massive terrifying terrifying figure of a movie so far, but. I think, again, if we're talking about ideals, I think Oppenheim is going to win for sound. For visual effects, we have The Curator, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Napoleon, and Poor Things. Again, which, uh, uh, what's also majorly surprising is no Oppenheimer in this, uh, even though the movie does mostly employ pa practical effects. Which again, nowhere to be found in visual effects. But I think uh, uh, this is a very tight category, even without uh, Napoleon. I mean, I mean, without uh, Oppenheimer, I do apologise. Which uh, that would be a surefire winner and would be in the shortlist in the Oscars, unfortunately. But I think I do want to see the curator win for visual effects because it visually it's a very cool movie and visual effects wise on an 80 million dollar budget it's also very cool. And of course to wrap things up at the short end of things we have short film, Festival of Slaps, Grodda, Jellyfish and Lobster, Such a Lovely Day and Yellow. Uh, again I've not seen any of these unfortunately so I'd imagine it goes to Festivals of Slaps. It's, I don't know, it's about Will Smith, I guess, or Joey, B Joey Barton on a typical day on Twitter. But, that's all slaps maybe. For short animation, we have Crab Day, Visible Mending, and Wild Summon. Maybe Crab Day, I don't know. So, what do you think of the BAFTA nominations? Let me know in the comments, subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd, and this is Elijah Wells, and bye!